hive. Actually, I say my hive. It's my son's hive. He's the real beekeeper and the one that uh, has gotten into beekeeping and uh, you know knows knows more about it actually than I do. Now this is winter, so the bees are in their winter mode. They're all <coughs> these two units here are what we call deeps, and that's where the bees are right now. That's where they live <coughs> and where they raise their brood. And then in the summer, <coughs> when it's uh, they start producing the honey, we'll put a this device here is a, called a queen excluder. It's uh, it's just the right size so that the worker bees can get through here, but the queen bee is too big to to pass through this. So we'll put this queen excluder on top of these two units here that we call the the deeps. We'll put that in there, and this unit here is what we call a a honey super. This is where the bees actually make and keep their their honey. And in this is a bunch of frames that has the, you can buy these foundations already made, uh, just the shape of, of the cells that they use. And uh, we don't want them making their brood up here where the honey will be harvested. So that's the reason you need to have that queen excluder between them. The next thing we'll do is uh, in the spring, he may want me to uh, feed them, like I say, and put some sugar water in here to make sure they've got enough nutrition to get them the rest of the way through the winter until they, until they can start going out and working and, and getting nectar. Well, the lifespan of a bee is, uh, it depends on what time of the year they're born. They're, they're such workers during the summer that if they're out all the time why they'll they may not live more than six or eight weeks if they're flying all the time hmm. now this is winter this little device here is a is a mouse guard because mice it's it's warm the bees keep the temperature in there and, and it's a nice place mice would like to go in there and and uh, have the warmth to live and also uh, get honey I suppose if they could these things are full of honey. We leave about 80 pounds of, of honey uh, in there to get the bees through the winter. They have to, that's their food source uh, during, the, during the winter months. So it's kind of tricky. Beekeepers, uh, you know, like to leave enough in there, but not, not more than they need to. This top unit here is a, is a feeder. I could take that off. In the spring, well, I will put uh, sugar water in here, and it's designed so that the the bees can get down in this little area here and get down to the sugar water and take that back into the into the hive where they where they store it. Some hives are much more productive and efficient than others. Now, actually. This last year, this one didn't didn't produce, but my son had a very good year, and he got about 75 to 80 quarts of, of honey from from his hives. It uh, it depends on how good a queen you have, if the if the hive is swarmed or not, how many bees are still in there, and a number of factors like that. Now, raising bees these days, there's some technology involved because disease is an issue with with bees and so we always uh, have to have to medicate and do things like that this little I don't know if you can really notice but here's a little spacer and uh, so I put I put medicine between this upper and, and lower a little tray or some of the antibiotics he makes like a little sort of like a flour tortilla and you put that in there and the bees eat it or they're very good housekeepers they like if there's any foreign materials in there why well, they like to clean it up so you put medicine out and they they want to get that material out of there and then they uh, that's the way they they eat the medicine now one thing that you have to deal with is is swarming 
if the bee if this happens in the in the spring like in May uh, usually in there if the hive gets too full why then <coughs> they'll they'll swarm now swarming is an interesting phenomena they just they'll come out and just be a huge crowd of them and uh, they'll go around and they'll usually land someplace close hang on to a branch or like the, my trellis over there or something like that and they'll be oh typically a clump of bees like oh between the size of a football and a basketball uh, all swarming hanging together and during that time when they're swarming uh, they're not interested in stinging you can you can go out and handle these swarms without any protective gear uh, because they've sort of tanked up on some honey while they're when they're getting ready to, to swarm and they don't have any honey with them to protect and so they're not interested in stinging you if you know when they sting you why they die so they're not interested in in that so usually you can unless you pinch them or do something like that why they won't uh, they won't uh, sting you when they're swarming. The the honey is in these uh, <coughs> frames like this, and of course this is, is is usually about this deep. And first thing, and and when a when a cell is full, why then the bees will cap it, put sort of a wax across the the top of it. So to process it, why first they they have a sort of a specialty knife that they slice off the cap so that it opens those cells and then to get the honey out of those cells they put these frames a couple at a time depends on the size of your machine into a centrifuge and it spins around and forces the honey out of the cells into the into the container and then uh, there's a valve on the <clears throat> on the bottom of this container, and uh, you put a, a, a sieve or a, like a cloth, a cheesecloth or something like that, over a pail, so that as the honey goes through, it it cleans it, and then you have the, you know, the just the clean raw honey that you can use in that form, or you can also uh, just harvest. Some people like the honey in the comb. Uh, they would not. They would not use this this plastic part, but just the the beeswax cells. Uh, some people will uh, eat their honey and the and the beeswax. Of course, what you hear the most, I suppose, is 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 clover honey. Uh, a lot of people like clover honey. This honey would be called you know, just wildflower honey because it comes from flowers mainly from surrounding in the, in the city. But depending on uh, where they're getting their pollen, uh, it, it affects the color of the honey. Some honey is much lighter, some is darker. We just use the, use the honey for, for eating, usually spreading on bread or I like it on toast. Is it especially. better than store-bought? Oh, well, it's... Uh, you know, it's probably all about the same, but it's just a little more special if you make it, get it from your own, from your own bees. But one thing about bees, of course, is is the product uh, you get the the honey from. Them. But the other thing that's so essential to have bees is to pollinate all the flowers and fruit trees and and all that kind of uh, thing that we have. It's a real concern for, especially some of the farmers who have bees to pollinate their almond orchards and fruit orchards and things like that. Uh, there's concern about uh, disease and collapsing colonies and the bees uh, that would really impact farmers. Uh, it's fun to watch them in the summertime. I, I like to just sit and watch them take off and, and land. And they'll have predominant patterns that seem like they're usually going in the same direction. I'll sit and count. It reminds me of a little, like an aircraft carrier, to see them coming in and taking off. They'll have about 75, I've counted about like 75 departures in a minute from this one hive of those bees 
taken off and going out to get their their pollen. They say that the bees will work in a radius of about a mile and a half uh, you know each direction so that gives a, a pretty big area that these particular bees here will will go. But in a city like this uh, having bees just uh, produces uh, more capacity for the pollination and so on.